After round six, the verdict is in. You're on AFL.com.au. Hello, everyone. My name's Matt Thompson, and this is our exclusive chance to chat with the chairman of the Match Review panel, Mark Fraser. Mark, welcome. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Well, you guys have been in the news. Lots of talk about the Match Review panel and its role in the game. Already this season, there have been four quite high-profile cases. Three of them, uh, in particular, were thrown out at the tribunal. One actually didn't even make it to the tribunal. Are you comfortable with where the process is at at the moment? Yeah, well, very comfortable with where the process is at. Um, have to remember with what we're doing, um, we assess about 30 roles, uh, 30 um, charges a week. We'll sort of have a bit of a look and see at those incidents over the, the weekend, what's happened. Um, we then uh, sit down and decide whether a player should be charged or so. We're not the final determinant. The tribunal can be the final determinant. So we, um, based on the evidence that we have, so the video, medical evidence um, and poten potentially uh, an investigation, if that's warranted, we make a decision based on that. And then the player, if they um, do decide to um, contest that, they can go to the tribunal and make um, that decision, they make the decision there. So we're very comfortable with the, si the, the way the system runs. Over the years this system has been in place, the match review panel has become a big part of the game. Everybody now awaits the verdict on a Monday. Uh, what do you say to people who, who say that they've lost confidence in the match review panel? Well, once again, as I was sort of um, previously saying, it's just uh, part of the system. So we're going and charging people based on the evidence that we find. Um, that that's not going to always be the, the right way to, to go. So the, at the tribunal, they get to state their case, bring in further evidence potentially, and when that happens, um, the right decision gets made. So um, it's not a matter of us making the, the wrong decision, it's a matter of finally getting to the right outcome. So you don't sit at home at night and go, uh, when the tribunal verdict comes in, and go, oh, disappointed I stuffed that up? Oh, no, not at all, because um, other evidence can come to light. So um, I think it's a great system and it works really well. All right, let's talk about a couple of the incidents from the weekend. Uh, obviously, slide tactics have been a talking point. Fremantle's Greg Broughton has been charged with rough conduct on David Swallow from the Gold Coast Suns. Now, this has been judged as negligent, uh, not reckless, medium impact and also body contact. He has been handed a one-match suspension, but that can be downgraded to a reprimand with an early plea. Mark, let's have a look at the vision. OK, yeah, here you can see there's a loose ball. Um, Broughton comes in um, and slides and elects to slide to protect the ball from Swallow, who's approaching. Um, we believe he slides feet first into circ in circumstances where he should know contact should occur. Um, and as a result, uh, Swallow received uh, an ankle injury from this. Um, after the decision the other week um, with Lindsay Thomas at the tribunal, um, the AFL sent out a, a memo um, to the club stating that if a player um, uh, players risk offending under the rough conduct rule if they slide feet or knees first where they should know that contact to an opponent could result. Um, and we believe, based on this, um, that uh, Broughton has a case to answer. So is this similar to the Lindsay Thomas one? Because you mentioned that one there. Obviously, when that got to the tribunal, the evidence was overwhelming and he, he got off that charge. Is this similar or you're saying that the clubs now have, have had this extra warning and that's why this has been referred? Yeah, we, it's a similar si situation, but we believe that with this extra information um, that uh, we think that a charge is still warranted. All right, let's have a look at another issue of sliding. This is uh, someone who didn't uh, get reported, Stephen Milne, but this is an incident you reversed of your view today. Yeah, as you can see from the, the footage, uh, Milne comes in, but he is slightly pushed um, from the Hawthorne player from behind and then um, slips more than slides into the, the contest. So we believe this is more accidental uh, contact. Just on sliding, uh, this is a question that a lot of people are asking in terms of does it matter if a player gets injured? Is it, is it as simple as if, if a player is injured that you're going to get charged and if the player's not injured, you're not going to get charged? No, um, it, it's the, the way that a player goes into the, the contest. So he actually has to, to do something um, that we believe he has control over or, um, the, and as you saw from that circumstance, um, he was slightly pushed. So circumstances beyond his control. So accidental contact is not reportable, um, but um, some of the conduct that, that they do is. OK, let's go to the headline-grabbing suspension of the weekend, I guess. This is West Coast's Ashton Hams. Uh, a rough conduct charge as well, but, but very different to the, the previous one we've seen. This was on Andrew Swallow from North Melbourne. Reckless, this has been adjudged. Low impact and high contact. A two-match suspension. It'll remain at two games, even with a guilty plea, because he has an existing bad record. Talk us through this. Um, with this, um, we thought that was reckless because he jumps in the air to make contact. If a player jumps into the air, then they should know that they can potentially um, cause high contact so we deem that that was reckless. Um, there was low impact because the medical report said that there were no symptoms from this uh, incident um, and when attended to on the ground and um, he wasn't treated after the game at all um, uh, with this so we decided that the, um, the impact was low based on the, the video evidence. 
Um, and from uh, Ham's previous record, that means um, he does get the two weeks. So it's not just from this incident. OK, moving along, Adelaide's Sean McKernan. He's been charged with striking Sydney's Alex Johnson. Uh, the details from this one, intentional, low impact, body contact. A one-match suspension, that's going to also remain at one match with an early guilty plea. Yeah, and from uh, this one, you see McKernan running along um, with Johnson. He uh, then strikes him in the stomach. Um, Johnson goes to ground. Um, the medical came back clear, but we believe from the video evidence and what you can see there that um, there was sufficient force to warrant a strike uh, now, in charge. Now, with a couple of these incidents, we've seen the players have got potentially higher penalties because of their previous record. Do you think, and does it frustrate you sometimes when you see the reporting of the match review panel verdict, that perhaps people don't recognise instantly, oh, the reason he's got that extra week is because he has a bad record. That's the way the system's designed. Yeah, and that, that happens fairly regularly, but um, that's just the way the system works. Um, if people understand and know how the system works, then they, they realise that, yes, yeah, some things that are a reprimand will be a strike for others due to previous poor um, poor record or uh, carryover points. And, and that can actually be very different. I mean, you can get a, a, quite a substantially higher penalty, can't you, if you've got a 50% loading, say, because you've got an extremely bad record. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some players do have a, a tribunal record and that increases their loading quite significantly. All right, let's just finish up with this one. Paddy Ryder, he wasn't charged after this heated exchange on the weekend. The camera was certainly in the right spot to capture it. This is the long shot, but we'll look at the, the close-up in a moment. Talk us through your assessment of this. With this... Um, um, the medical came back clear um, uh, with this, um, but when we slow down the footage and have a bit of a look at it, um, you, you see that the, 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 the action of Ryder here, he's more a bit of a, an open hand um, push to the, the face rather than anything else. Um, a free kick was paid for that um, and we didn't think that it was forced enough to warrant a report. Um, and this is fairly consistent with our approach over the, the season with uh, other um, striking charges. There's something I just wanted to ask you quickly about this. Malay charges, how does this, is this different from a, from a Malay? Because it's just not as full on? Yeah, basically that, that's it. Sort of with a the melee, there's generally uh, a lot more players, and it's very vigorous in nature. So uh, players are being thrown to the ground, and uh, a lot of people come in. So it does depend on the vigour of the situation. Mark, thank you for being here. Great to talk to you. No worries, mate. Mark Fraser with us, and that is the verdict here on AFL.com today. You know, of course, the process does continue. All players cited have until 11 o'clock Tuesday morning to decide if they'd like to challenge their charge at the tribunal. You'll find a full report on all of the incidents here online. Until next time, thanks for your company.